Welcome back to the channel, Hill Creek Outdoors. Got an instructional and operational video for you today on the Keystone Outback 293 UBH. The UBH stands for Ultimate Bunkhouse, which is in the back of the unit uh, here. This video is going to be primarily for those who are looking to rent our camper in the future, but also to those who have already booked a reservation with us and your trip's coming up soon. What we're going to do today is walk around the entire unit. We're going to go over the gear that comes with it and then how to use that gear. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into the video. We're going to start in the front and work our way around, but we're going to start with that hitch and get right on into it. So let's meet, I'll meet you right up here in the front. All right. So now we're in the front of the uh, camper here where the hitch is. Just so you guys know, we do provide the trailer hitch system which we do offer the equalizer hitch. It is going to be a weight distribution hitch along with sway control system. So we will show you guys how to use that once you arrive to pick up the unit. Um, we're also going to put up a video that you guys can reference. It'll be a quick short video uh, how to hook up from your unit, your driving unit onto the camper. So it'll be a quick, easy tutorial of how to actually hook up and use the sway bar system. Now, we do have an electronic uh, hitch on this unit. It will run off the battery or your vehicle that you're towing with is battery. If you aren't using a battery, it also will run off of the electric if the unit is hooked up. So you have your extend, lower. Um, it does have a little light right here. So in, at night, it helps you to hook up to your vehicle. Um, you got your chains, obviously, your, your breakaway, and then your seven point connection there there's also a light back here a switch um, which will turn on this real big led lights which will give you great visibility for up here in the front if you're trying to work at your campsite or hook the unit up once again we do have a battery here the battery is always going to be uh, fully charged um, new battery make sure you guys are good to go if you potentially do a, a dry camping situation or if you're just getting to where you're going so this unit does have two propane tanks. They are 20 pound propane tanks. Take that off, you can access them. I have this one unhooked right now because I gotta go fill it back up. This one is empty currently. But what you're gonna be doing is we provide one full tank of propane. So one full tank of propane. Um, it does have an auto switching regulator on the propane tanks. So you'll keep it in the middle here keep both tanks on you shouldn't have to mess with this and if one goes empty it'll automatically switch to the other so that is a good feature for you guys so that's everything to know at the front i always recommend putting a block underneath the uh tongue jack that way if you are on some soft soil it doesn't sink in and i'll show you where you can obtain where we store these blocks for you so let's move around to the front and i'm going to show you some of the gear and some storage areas all right guys so now we're going to go over uh some of the gear that comes with the unit when you uh pick up the unit or when we deliver the unit you're going to have all three of these containers they will be inside this um pass-through storage compartment this pass-through storage goes all the way to the other side there are, is going to be two doors and then you do have a light right inside here so you have some uh, visibility at at night to be able to look in into these containers but what comes in these containers uh, we'll start right here in the front first things most important is going to be uh, your chocks right so we provide three chocks um, you're going to want to chalk the unit before you do anything of unhooking for safety purposes okay once you chalk it then you can start your leveling process if you need to unchalk it to continue leveling um, do so and what you're going to use is you're going to use these uh, leveling side to side okay so how this works is you have two of these pieces and they're going to go on the rear of each tire on either side whichever side you need to level put them both on that side so you have two axles one behind one tire and the other one obviously on the other you're going to back up and it will kind of roll like this okay it will kind of roll back until you're in a level position once you're in your level position you're going to take the other part of it which is another looking chalk 
it'll go under just like this and it's going to kind of cradle that tire it serves as another chalking point but will help you to level so you have plenty of chalks and leveling systems and we're going to go ahead and show you that process now All right, so you're going to go back until you get your desired level um, side to side. You're going to throw your other chalk piece under, and it's going to cradle it, okay? There is that rubber mat that's underneath, so if you're on gravel or a, a surface that it's going to slide, put that rubber mat down first before you put the cradling mechanism on. And then you chalk it here, chalk the other side, and you'll be good to start your unhooking process from your vehicle that's towing the camper here. All right, so now that we showed you how to level that side to side, what you're going to also have in this first container is going to be a manual crank system. It does have a three-fourths uh, socket size on the front. What I would recommend you do is bringing a drill. We don't provide a drill or socket. We just have the manual, but this is going to save you some time if you have the ability to bring this. What you're going to use this for is all four of your stabilizer jacks which there's one on each four all four corners of the unit put it on there and it will help you lower and raise this much quicker than the manual process but we do provide the manual tool going on into these um, these right here are going to be your tire stabilizers and it just helps with that back to back motion when you're walking through the unit you'll put this in between the tires and you're going to, once again, this is the same size, 3 4 So if you have that drill, it'll help you to expand it uh, to the closer size. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to crank it down. Once it touches, you're going to tighten it about 10 more cranks just to make that good connection. And we'll show that to you right now. Once again, if you get it close, it'll help you to get it in here. All right, a little bit too much. Back it off. And once it gets close here, you're going to take this little tool, which will be in the container as well. It does have a switch where you can go back and forth, whichever way you want. And you're going to go ahead and get this snug against the tire here. Once it starts getting snug, take that tool... Hope I'm not in your guys' way here. And you're just going to go back and forth. So now that, make sure it's in the middle of the tire as well. And then you're going to go, now that it's snug and it's on the tire, you're going to crank this an additional 10 times. So one, two, three, right, all the way to 10. And once it's on 10, I don't know if I was at 10, but it, make sure you go to 10. That'll give a good stability back and forth. You're going to do this on both sides. Opposite way to take it off you switch around and You go right back the other way when you do put these back in our um, Container make sure they're all the way flat and together That way it just makes the process a little bit easier for everybody who's going to be using the unit like that All right, so now we showed you how to get that tire stabilizer in there. They're called the X chalk they're not you they're not supposed to be used for a chalk let me just clarify they're not supposed to be used for a chalk but they do help with the stabilization of the unit you're going to have a couple things in here this tool right here is going to be for your sway bar uh, system if you're having trouble getting your sway bars in proper order you're also going to have a four-way if you need to replace anything you shouldn't need to use this because you guys are going to have the insurance and it's got that roadside assistance, so that's good. The rest of this is just some minor tools that you might need. Moving on to the next one here, you're gonna. This is gonna be your fresh water system supply. So we do provide two hoses, and they are fresh water hoses. Please, I can't emphasize that enough. These are fresh water hoses. Do not use them for the black tank, please. We have a separate hose in the back, which we'll cover that later for the sewage and black tank. Uh, process. So you're going to have two 
um, water hoses. These do, this is just in case that somebody puts a water spigot too far at a unit or at a campsite. You have two hoses, the ability to hook up to your fresh water. You're going to have this piece right here. This piece is highly important to your camping needs. It is a PSI regulator. There's a lot of campsites that have way too high of water pressure and it will cause harm to the unit's um, plumbing systems. So make sure you're putting this on. It is gonna go at the spigot, at the spigot location. You'll screw it straight onto the spigot, go right into your hose, and then go all the way to the camper from there, okay? So make sure you utilize this. <clears throat> You are going to have a 90 degree um, water angle, which that will go on the unit itself. And I will show you that later. We will always provide a water filter for you guys. So you have that. We also have a T. So if you want to put this at the water spigot, put the regulator on one side and have an additional hose. If you have that ability, um, you can do that. To spray off things we also provide a spraying nozzle so you can uh, maybe spray down if you're at the beach or fill up some water uh, cans for different uses um, you name it so it, you have that in here for your ability moving on to the next is we're gonna have our electrical um, stuff we have these all provided with these nice clamps here that you can carry them around easily we do have two in here this is an extension and then this here is going to be to your actual unit this is a 30 foot 30 amp cord which goes straight into the camper and then we have an additional 30 foot extension uh 30 amp cord you are going to have a surge protector that make sure this surge protector goes in first to the unit where you're plugging in and then plug up your um, 30 amp cord from here to the unit to our camper we also provide um, if you're somewhere where they don't have 30 amp service we do provide a pigtail that goes down to a 110 volt so a regular outlet just note with this 110 you can run the air condition but you will not be able to run the uh, microwave and the air conditioner at the same time and vice versa. So be mindful of that or it will pop a breaker on the other side, not the camper side, but it will pop a breaker on wherever you're hooking up to. So that's the electric, all the stuff we have uh, that's going to be in the front. So let's go ahead and move on. So moving down the camper, you have your storage bin there in the front, your main door into the unit. Right here, you're going to have a port where you can plug up any 110 items. If you need to, like a fan or something like that, this port here is going to be an additional port for TV, television, things like that. Um, moving on down, you'll have your black tank flush system right there, which I'll show you how to use that. You do have the awning. One thing I'm going to mention for the awning real quick is I always say the awning is the most probable thing that's going to be damaged in any type of environment where you're using a camper, okay? But is the most expensive thing to fix. You can use the awning when you use the camper. Um, I'm not saying you can't use the awning, but just be very mindful that you don't leave it out overnight. And if you leave your campsite for an extended period of time, make sure you put that all the way back in because you never know when wind is going to come up, swoop, and do damage. Wind's a very dangerous thing. Unfortunately, the awning is not covered by the insurance and it will have to come out of a security deposit. So we're going to move right over here and we're going to talk about the outdoor kitchen. The outdoor kitchen we have, it does have a refrigerator along with a two burner set we do have a place for tape paper towels and you can put some seasoning spices there it does have two tables that retract for additional 
space if you're cooking out here. You see these tables right here? We do offer a lot of add-ons, so be mindful of that. And if you're looking to add on any additional things, uh, please let us know and we can provide those for you. Um, these tables right here will be placed inside of the main storage compartment in the front of the unit. So once again, you have these that slide in and out for additional storage right here. For this, if you're going to utilize this outdoor two burner set, there is a hose that's going to come all the way down here. And there's a port that you plug into for that. And it has an on and off switch for the propane. If you're not using that, make sure the propane is turned off. We would truly appreciate that. It's just a safety mechanism. And then when you're done, uh, disconnect and put that hose back up in here. This is really easy to put up. You just fold those in, folds down. We do provide some cleaning supplies up here. This is a nice storage area and there is a light up here. Um, so you guys can have better visibility. It does come with a removable wash bin. Um, there's no water out here. It is a wash bin, so you can just throw that out, replace it, and then we have the refrigerator. A couple other things to note with the outdoor kitchen. This is magnetic, okay, so it'll stay up. If you're going to utilize the outdoor kitchen, please don't leave it open overnight. Or if you're gone for an extended period of time, um, it can cause damage as well. It's real easy to slide in. You're going to pull these little things here. Make sure your drawers are in. And it'll slide in. You'll have to remove this as well. It just snaps off. And then there's a port here to lock it down. And that's also for transport. If you are going to have this up as well, um, you cannot open the window right here in the bunkhouse, it will damage it. So make sure that window is closed. Moving on to the back of the unit, right here in the bumper, you do have these little squeeze things that come out, they're caps, they're on either side. You can put additional storage in there. We like to put the equalizer stabilizer bars in here when we're not using them. Just gets them in and out of the way. We do provide this black box here, and this, this is a storage container that we house um, some additional items for you guys. You can move it to the side, shift it, whatever you need to do. If you want to take a cooler or something like that, you can do so. Inside this black box, you're going to have all of your blocks for the stabilizer jacks along with the tongue, electronic tongue jack in the front. So make sure you utilize these for a good solid base. That'll help you out with stability. We also have all of our black tank and gray tank hoses in here along with the... Um, the water hose that will connect to the black tank. So, and we'll show you that process and everything that's actually in this box when we move to the black tank um, operational part of the video. So coming around the back side here, you are gonna have your hookup for your electric. Once again, you do have the electrical cord that's in the front. You're gonna put the big end right in here. It does have a screw. So make sure you screw that. Be real careful when you're screwing it till we get the threads appropriate and it will seal that up and then that will go straight to the electrical uh, hookup that the campsite has. Okay, so you're going to have two ports for your tanks. You're going to have a distribution point right here in the back. This one's going to be your um, gray tank for your bathroom, which is going to be your shower and your sink. And then you'll have a black tank, which is going to be your your toilet okay in the front and they are labeled on the side of the the camper here so you know where they're at and what valve goes to which you are also going to have a gray tank up front here with a port and a release valve this one goes to the front sink in the kitchen okay it's very important when you're utilizing these tanks that when you get to your campsite you do not open them and leave them open all the time you keep them closed until they're full once they're full or you're wanting to empty them, then that's when you open them, okay? So make sure you do not leave them open. That'll just invoke having gases and smells come up that you don't want, okay? Um, so the process we have, here's our, our black and gray tank uh, lines and equipment. We always recommend you use gloves, okay? We provide gloves for you. We don't want you getting sick, anything like that. Wear gloves, wash your hands afterwards whenever handling your black tank stuff. 
Okay, so we have two of these Rhino hoses, and I'm going to give you a quick example of how they work. They are 15-foot hoses, and they expand, okay? They do have uh, release ports on both sides that will go into each other so you don't lose them, just like this. Makes it real nice and easy, okay? So what first thing you're going to do is you're going to have your black and gray tank in the back. You're going to open this port like so. You're going to take this piece right here, okay? It has a clear um, and another uh, extra valve in case anything happens. It gives you another safety. This gives you also the ability to watch when it's being... Uh, released and what kind of material is in there because you're going to be looking for a clear uh, type look. You're going to hook these up just like this. It'll snap in, right? And then you're going to extend it as much as you need. If you need another hose, click it and keep going. All right. Once you get to your sewer location where your hole is in the ground, you're going to utilize this piece. Once again, it has a clear piece so you can once again, check the material that's coming out. It'll snap right on like this. Extend this all the way out into the hole like an example like this, okay? What you're going to do first, okay, when you're opening these tanks, is you're going to always release the black tank first. Always release the black tank first. You reach under, release the black tank. It'll come to here. Then you can release, release it from here. That's going to... Do all the black tank, okay? Once that comes down to a drizzle, right, and it's just barely coming out, what you're going to do is you're going to hook up your black tank hose. It is orange. It matches all this stuff. Black tank hose to your water uh, spigot that is at the campsite. You're going to take that over and put it into the black hose or black flush that we talked about on the other side of the camper. Plug that in. Very important that you keep this valve and the black tank valve open during this process. You'll turn the water on. It's going to flush and clean out the black tank. All right. Let that run for about five minutes with both of these valves once again in the open position. You'll see it start going out. It'll start going out and it's going to get cleaner and cleaner. Okay. When that five minutes is up, Turn that black flesh off. You can remove the hose, put it back up. You're going to close these valves again, okay? Close the black valve, then close this valve. You're going to go and you're going to open the gray tank. Open the gray tank. It'll come here. Once again, open this valve. All that gray tank for your sink and your shower is going to then flush out of the system. Once that's down to a drizzle, you're going to take this whole piece off. Put your cap back on. So you'll take the whole piece off like this. Your cap will go back on till it's snug. This whole piece will take up front and we'll do the same thing with the gray tank in the front. Release it out, get it done, close it up. That's all there is with the black tank. Once again, you're gonna take gloves off the appropriate way, hold them, throw that away. Go wash your hands. We are going to have a light out here on the back, which will give you some good visibility if you're trying to do all that stuff in the gray tank, flush and all that. We're going to work back here at night. We do have the slide out, so make sure um, you do have appropriate clearance when you are putting the slide out at a campsite. And it sits out at approximately two and a half feet, maybe three feet with the windows out. As you can see, the windows kind of pop out. So here on this side, you're going to have your, your fresh water tank connection and your city connection, okay? This pass-through is, once again, that pass-through door that goes all the way across to the other side. So your fresh water connection is going to be a tank. It's a 48-gallon tank, and within that tank, is potable water okay so we always fill that up for you guys before you go on your trip so you will have potable water if you're in transport you just have to flip the uh pump on which we'll cover when we go inside to utilize that okay if you are going to a campsite that has city water once again don't forget 
put that regulator directly to the hose or to the um, faucet. Then you can put your water hose, your fresh water hose, all the way to here. Then you're going to hook up your filter. Then you'll hook up, there's a little extension that goes on there to the 90 degree. And a 90 degree will go into the city water. So it'll just be hanging here like this. Let me show you that real quick. All right, so once again, you're going to have your 90 degree. What you'll do is you'll hook that 90 degree up here like this. And you're going to get it nice and tight. Um, but don't over tighten it just enough to where it doesn't leak. Okay. Then you're going to take your filter. Okay. It does have a flow. So make sure it's flowing the right way. You'll put that extender on that I'm talking about that is in your um, water container that's underneath here. You will hook that directly up like this. And then your water hose will actually go to the bottom here to your spigot. Okay. That's what it'll look like. And then you'll be good to go for your uh, city water. It's just like you do at your house, okay? So you, you won't have to worry about turning the pump on. You don't even need to turn the pump on at all. So that's how you do your, your city and your fresh water. All right, as soon as you walk into the camper, you're going to have a place to store your keys. But there's also right up here is going to be your main on and off switch for your lights. You're going to have an on and off switch for the light in the back. Like I said, where the electrical connection and your... Um, black and gray water locations are. You're going to have a light that is directly for here coming inside. It's just like a little privacy light. Um, and then you're going to have a long LED light that goes underneath the awning. You can turn that on for even greater visibility, okay? You're going to have some storage right here underneath the where you put your shoes, things like that. Top here, you're going to have your all your utensils for silverware. You got some measuring cups in here, a liquid measuring cup, some teaspoons, tablespoons, things like that for your guys' needs. The bottom drawer will have just additional storage. To note, right here on the side of the main door, you're going to have your fire extinguisher, okay? All right, so moving right on here, right above the TV, you are going to have... Um, we provide a first aid kit for you guys if you need anything first aid wise. We also are going to have a booklet here. This booklet has every manual for the entire camper, okay? So if anything goes wrong, there's there's manuals in there. And then we also provide you guys a book that you can do uh, 50 locate or 50 states, great locations you can go to. So that's all up here. On the right side, you're going to have your stuff for putting the slide in and out. Your awning in and out, things of that nature, okay? So this unit does have a hot water tank. It's a six-gallon hot water tank. It does run on propane as well as um, electric. So if you're hooked up to an electric site, turn the electric um, one on. After you hook up your water, leave your gas off, okay? If you're dry camping or you don't have the electric, turn your electric off and turn your LP propane on okay before you do travel and transport the unit make sure that both of these are in the off position and the hot, hot water tank is not on okay on your right here you're going to have all your gauges for your all your tanks you're going to have also your battery so it'll tell your battery how full it is um, fresh water tank is going to be um empty your fresh water is going to be full when we give it to you, but it will show you the level as you use it. You're also going to have your black tank. Just note the black tank is never going to say completely empty. It will always say at least one-third. And there's a, the reason for that is because we put a little, a little liquid in there and chemicals uh, for you guys uh, before the thing. Your gray water is going to do both tanks. So you do have 48 gallons in the fresh or in the gray tank for the kitchen as well as the shower, okay? Just note a normal shower that people take, you're probably gonna get three showers before you have to empty your gray tank in the restroom, okay? So that's this. You also have your water pump turn on and off, okay? So if you're not hooked up to city water and you're utilizing the fresh water tank, the potable water that is uh, provided, you will have to turn the pump on. You're gonna hear it pump up, okay? It's gonna be, you're gonna hear that noise. 
It will only take about 10, 15 seconds and it'll cut off. If it continues, okay, and you continue to hear it running, there's an issue. It's either we, there's either a water leak or something was left on, okay? So make sure you come out here and, and turn that pump off until you figure out what's going on, all right? So all that information's here. You have your awning in and out. Make sure you don't overextend it. Um, once you hear it stop when you're bringing it in, it's good to go. For your slide, when you take it out, it's going to go out. Once you hear that start to bog down and does, it's not going out, just stop, okay? It's fully extended. Same thing when you return it. Once it feels, starts sounding like it's bogging down and it's stopped, that's it. All that information's here. And just to show you the um, unit going in for the slide, this is going to make some noise. Um, but that's how it is. If you, you need to stop for any reason, you can go back the opposite way. Just know you can. Um, it's going to come all the way in. As you can see, that register down there. Be mindful of that register. Um, sometimes you just got to watch it a little close so it doesn't get caught. See, it goes right over top. And then right there where it starts to bulk down, that's it. It's all the way closed. Moving on to the kitchen, we do have a cover here. Please don't use this for a cutting board. It just gives you some extra uh, prep space. If you're not utilizing it, throw it right uh, in a safe location. Um, nice big sink. Uh, we do provide coffee pot, coffee cups. Um, up here, you're going to have additional um, coffee cups. You're going to have your um, dishware, so cups, plates, bowls. We provide some washing tub as well as a, let me get it out here, a screen here so you can lay it down like this and it's kind of like a drying location for your, for your dishes and that just folds up and goes right in there. We do have additional uh, towels up there and hot pad holders if you need them for the kitchen. You are going to have a microwave. Once again, the microwave, if you're hooked up to a 110 outlet, it will not run simultaneously with the air condition, so be mindful of that. Um, but if you're hooked up to normal 30, you're good to go to do anything. All right. You're going to have a three burner um, stove top, and all you do is turn the gas on to light, turn the spark until it lights. We do have an oven here. The oven, you do have to use a actual lighter you'll turn it in the on the pilot push that button in for pilot you reach down there light the pilot button and then you'll be good to go for the remainder of your trip once you're done utilizing it make sure all these are off so you don't have gas coming into the, the unit down here you are going to have your um co2 so your carbon monoxide detector as well as your breaker box um, if anything is not working, check your breaker box. Make sure everything is turned on and there's no issues there. We do have a refrigerator. Um, it does have the ability to be used for electric and propane. So if you're dry camping, um, it can run off propane. If you're hooked up to electric, you'll be good to go. We always turn this on in advance so it's cold for you guys. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, there is an option to have it in gas and or electric. We just keep it on auto. That way it automatically switches for your needs. Um, you do have a freezer and then the entire space for um, refrigeration. All right, so this area of the camper is going to be right behind the kitchen. You're going to have your thermostat. You can use your air condition, heat. You can turn it just on a fan if you want it on a fan. Um, pretty self-explanatory there. This is going to be the entrance into our bathroom, which we'll talk about here in a second. And then on the back side here, it's going to be going into your bunkhouse, okay? So for your bathroom, okay, you're going to have your, your toilet. It has all the instructions on your toilet right here on how to flush it. But the best way, once again, your black tank is going to have uh, liquid in there. And the more liquid, the better. It's a 48-gallon tank. The more liquid you put in there, it's going to help you get everything out. It's going to help with odors, and it's going to just help things kind of slosh around and break down, okay? So don't be scared to use more water than not. What you're going to do is you're going to pull this lever a little bit halfway back. It's going to put some water in the bowl. Do your business. Pull it all the way forward. It'll drop. 
and then you can do halfway to fill the bowl back up. Once again, more water in there, the better. We do provide um, toiletry or toilet paper. So you're gonna have toilet paper here. You'll have additional toilet paper under here. There is a GFI down here. So if for any reason something's not working, check that GFI, it might've just been tripped, okay? Right inside here is gonna be your light switch for your lights, as well as a fan for the exhaust uh, fan above, okay? You can open that vent, turn the exhaust fan on if you're taking a shower, if that's what you wanna do. All right, so right here, you're gonna have additional storage underneath. Um, you're gonna have your sink. Your shower curtain's gonna be a, just a normal shower curtain. We do have a wand system here for your shower. You can turn it on and off while you're in the shower to save on water if you want so. Just note when you turn it back on, it might get cold for a brief second, so tilt it to the left or I mean to the right, to the wall side, and you should be good. You do also have the ability to take a bath in here. If you have little kids, you can give them a bath. All right, so right here is where we're gonna have a pantry. Um, there are lights in here you can turn on, on all these. So if you need to see better, and they are just push, so you can see. Plenty of storage to put your um, food, things of that nature. We do provide uh, bags for or grocery bags if you need to use a bag of any sort. We do have some spices and seasonings down here. Plenty of storage. Um, we do provide Pampered Chef uh, pan and skillet there. Please don't use any metal materials on that. Uh, just for you guys and everybody else. It'll damage it. So we do provide that. We also have in this tote down here. Um, plenty of utensils, um, pizza cutter, we have a wine opener in there, um, spatulas, knives, cutting boards, you name it, um, it's in there. So anything that you're going to need to actually prepare a meal. So here on the left, you're going to have your dinette set. There is storage underneath both of these. So all you have to do is pull this off. You can put that there, and this raises up, and they're both the same on each side. So if you need additional storage, you can utilize that. We're always going to have a booklet here and all your guys' information for your stay, and then also um, some rental information, check-off sheets, what you guys need to do while you're arriving and before you depart, before you bring it back to us. So you have that on both sides. You're going to have um, a futon-style couch. We do provide an add-on ottoman, um, so check out the add-on there if you want somewhere to put your feet up. But how this operates is you just remove these two cushions. You're going to pull up from the bottom and push down, and it makes another bed. And to raise it back up, you just do that there. Um, so it does give you another place where you can... Uh, take another bed or make it another bed there Put those cushions back and you're ready to roll All right, so the emergency exit is going to be right here on the left side It is red behind the couch and then in the master. It's going to be on the Left side as well the driver's side of the unit right above here. You do have your smoke detector for the um, unit I also want to mention down below here, we do have an entertainment system that can be hooked up to the TV, but also your phone. And there is instructions on how to do this in our um, documents that we provide that will be on the table in the blue binder. But you can turn this on, you can turn it into zone one, which zone one will be inside the unit. Zone two will be outside the unit. There are speakers on the outside, as well as you can put it on both inside and outside. Underneath here, you're gonna have some tools if you need uh, any tools for your camping trip. You're gonna have your gloves for your sewage on the bottom, as long, uh, along with a little vacuum. You have a broom. You're gonna have a mop. Cleaning supplies is gonna be on your left here, your trash bag. And also, you're going to have additional batteries and everything that you're going to need, uh, lighter and stuff like that for your stead. Underneath the TV, you are going to have um, your controllers for your entertainment system and your TV. All right, so back here in the bunkhouse, we do provide a ladder for folks to get up in. Uh, makes it nice. You can just remove it. Go to the other side if you have somebody else. 
get, let them get up on that side, right? Um, for this side here, if you don't have somebody staying up here, um, you can always raise this up and get it out of the way and it will stay in that position. We do have a little dinette set back here for folks if you want that. And it also turns into a bed and we'll show you that um, on arrival if you're going to use it. Okay. There is storage underneath both of these booths as well. You are going to have storage underneath the bed on both sides. There's plenty of power outlets, lights underneath the bunks, power outlet once again up top. We do provide pillows. Uh, we do not provide sheets at this time. Okay. That's all there is to the bunk house and all these lights are manual. Okay. Oh, one other thing I'd like to mention is there is an emergency exit out the back. All you do is open it like this and it will push all the way out. You just push as far as you can and you guys can exit emergency exit. We also have one over the couch or behind the couch, which I'll show you that and in the master bedroom. Now moving into the master bedroom of the unit, you're going to have a bed. Um, we do provide the pillows once again. You have your lights, plenty of storage up top. You do have outlets on either side of the bed for, you know, whatever you may need to plug in. If that's phones, sleep apnea machines, um, there is USB-Cs as well. You have plenty of storage overhead. It goes all the way through. Um, you could actually hang stuff in here uh, for your use. It goes all the way deep. So it's all the way back here. Um, you do have lights all over as well. So... You do have the ability to close the doors inside the um, master bedroom for some privacy. We do ask that when you are traveling, you, you open them all the way up and latch them in the locking position for when you're traveling and they're not banging around. This is our unit, our operational and walkthrough of everything you're going to need to know for utilizing the camper on your next adventure. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hey. If you have any questions, please feel free and do not hesitate to reach out to us. We're there to answer your questions and help you along the way. So without further ado, we'll see you next time and we truly appreciate it.